Welcome to India Speak, the podcast by the Center for Policy Research. I'm Mukta Naik, a fellow at the Center, and this is a special episode commemorating 48 years of CPR. Joining me today is CPR President and Chief Executive Yamini Ayer, and she's going to talk about her impressions of CPR's journey, her vision for CPR in the years to come, the opportunities and challenges we face, and the center's role in shaping policy in this country. Yamini, welcome to India Speak. Thank you, Mukta. It's a pleasure to be here and a pleasure to have a role reversal. Usually I'm doing what you're doing, and it's nice to have the opportunity to sit back and just answer. <laughs> Yes, and I hope you enjoy that uh, and intend to give you all the opportunity to do so. Um, Yamini, CPR is turning 48 this year. That's that's quite a, a momentous uh, sort of number. Uh, how would you view the journey over these last four plus decades? Gosh, when one thinks back to what the world and India must have been like in 1973 when uh, Pai Panandekar uh, founded CPR to where we are today, it does feel like it's been quite a journey or must have been quite a journey and even in the years that I've uh, been at CPR which uh, now are so many that I feel I, I, I've literally grown up in the institution uh, I think the one thing uh, that really strikes me is uh, its staying power uh, it is a, uh, a credit to an institution that it, uh, ha it when it stays uh, and remains relevant over a, a long period of time it speaks to the institution's agility adaptiveness um, and relevance uh, to uh, the, the the founding principles uh, but also to the realities that it confronts as the years and decades roll on um, I think that the one thing that makes me feel really proud when I think of CPR uh, and look back to its history and its present as a student of public institutions and state capacity myself um, is its institutional resilience and its ability to hold its own uh, in a, a landscape where strong and robust institutions it has actually been India's Achilles heel from the time of CPR's founding uh, all the way into the present. So uh, I think that's that's really how I look at this journey um, and that's what makes uh, the resilience of this institution and its continued relevance into the contemporary is what makes me feel really proud. Thanks Yamini. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, India has had uh, many think tanks and research institutions which work around policy issues, uh, but, uh, you know, multi-sectoral and sort of national level think tanks are, it's perhaps a, a smaller subset. So how do you uh, sort of define CPR's role in this think tank environment? You know, if you look back to uh, some of the documents that uh, were crafted at the founding moment of the institution, uh, it's quite fascinating to see uh, that many of those concerns, um, in fact, uh, continue to have relevance today, which defines why we need multidisciplinary think tanks uh, in the policy landscape in India. Uh, Pai Panandikar, uh, who spent some time in government, founded CPR uh, really uh, out of a degree of frustration, I think, uh, with his time in government, uh, in that uh, government is very busy responding to the challenges of every day. And those challenges of every day are really significant if you think about the scale and scope of what the state does. Uh, uh, but as a consequence, perhaps, and because of the pulls and pressures of political economy, uh, its ability to really be reflective uh, and uh, look at the short term from the perspective of the long term is limited. And its capacities uh, to build in uh, thinking that frames an understanding of the policy environment and the long term consequences of policy is limited. And it was really in order to be able to bring that capacity into the state that CPR was founded um, and over uh, and, and I think it speaks to the vision of our founder that uh, that even back in the 1970s he recognized that the way in which to build a robust policy response uh, 
it has to be done through a multidisciplinary engagement the economist views the world in a particular way the sociologist views the world in a particular way the political scientist views the world in a particular way each of these lenses are extremely meaningful and insightful uh, but their power lies in their ability to speak to each other so from its inception cpr has been a interdisciplinary institution one that looked at india and the globe uh, through that interdisciplinary lens that's what makes cpr so unique and that's i think what keeps it unique in the think tank landscape um, you will see that there are uh, in the think tank ecosystem numbers of institutions that uh, are in some ways uh, more uh, sectorally focused so they're looking at strategic affairs they're looking at the economy they're looking at um, uh, environment increasingly now, some of the 21st century challenges of environment technology, all of which have spurted a, a whole range of, of crucial think tanks, each of which are making extremely meaningful contributions. But I think where CPR's contribution is distinct is, the, is its ability to build this kind of multi-sectoral lens to, uh, to, to questions of policy. So we can speak to the economy from the perspective of an economist and the perspective of an anthropologist and the perspective of a sociologist. Uh, and that combination is, is really the power or, and the relevance of the work that CPR does. Uh, Yamini, uh, your description sort of leads me uh, to, to this idea that the, the people who are seeking ideas on policy uh, are really looking for uh, ideas that can translate quickly into design action impact. So there's a lot of emphasis on the doing uh, and, and rather than the thinking. Um, CPR has sort of focused a lot on the role of ideas. So I'd like you to sort of speak a little bit more to uh, how do you think this sustained engagement with ideas is actually reshaping policy and how does CPR sort of see itself in that? So I think there are two crucial things here. Um, ideas are not about ivory towers. I think very often when we talk about ideas, uh, the, the imagination really is the, the ivory tower that is distanced from the real world. Um, and uh, it is in that ivory tower that a certain amount of thinking happens. And, uh, and, and it's that thinking that's relevant to shaping policy. In fact, good ideas are ones that are deeply engaged and constantly in conversation with the real world. And that's what actually distinguishes think tanks or policy research institutions like CPR from what happens, say, uh, uh, in, in the university. And I think that CPR's strength uh, lies in this ability to uh, bridge the ideas with the real world uh, uh, experience and from there really frame questions. So our sort of approach to policy making is not necessarily in the micro nuts and bolts of uh, implementation, even though that does shape uh, a lot of the day-to-day -day activity we do we enter into the world of implementation which is a significant concern of bureaucrats and policy policy the makers uh, but we enter in it uh, primarily through the lens of learning realities to be able to ask ourselves is the policy framework asking and responding to the right question so our colleague Parso sort of put it very nicely once when I was discussing this with him and he sort of said, well, think about it like this, uh, you know, uh, when you're sitting in the thick of policy making as, as an implementer, as a bureaucrat, designing the rules, etc. Uh, you know, you'll probably be asking what is the best way that I can put electric vehicles onto the road. Uh, but somebody needs to ask you why you want to do that in the first place and what your objective is. So if your objective is sustainable uh, urban transportation, uh, then maybe you have to think about electric vehicles as one element and therefore you're thinking about a much more integrated network of urban transportation, which then pushes you to think about all the things that Mukta, you do, housing, um, uh, access to public service delivery, infrastructure, and, and how they all integrate integrate together into a larger imagination of a sustainable inclusive city. Um, 
where you know there will potentially be electric vehicles but if you only focus on electric vehicles you will probably end up a little bit like that aborted brt experiment in delhi which now has these large empty pavements on which my children occasionally go and cycle uh but uh the pollution doesn't end and uh the average uh user of public transport is still caught uh in uh, broken transportation systems and and uh with, with low quality and low access so the role of ideas in shaping policy is very much about moving the policy ecosystem to ask itself are we uh, uh, asking the right question what are the goals and objectives of policy making into which the nuts and bolts of the challenges of implementation become uh, 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 integrated uh, and i think we do believe very strongly in all of our work as an institution that uh, ideas are only best uh, shaped by uh, uh being a participant in the everyday complexities of implementation and it's in the it's in the intersections of those conversations or uh, of uh, implement of of those challenges rather of implementation and and ideas that good policy making happens and we seek through our work uh, to be able to build exactly on those intersections Uh, Yamini uh, you, you know you paint this picture in which uh, there is a very complex set of uh, uh, I, of course problems but there's also a very collaborative and interactive uh, network uh, within which CPR operates in order to address these wicked problems or complex policy problems in this scenario how do you measure CPR's in- impact and you know as the head of the organization is this something that that worries you this question of measuring impact and and telling the cpr story uh to the world <laughs> impact is always a hard one how much can you sing your own praises <laughs> but uh no i i mean i think of of course it's a very crucial question uh that you pose um i think about impact uh itself as something that evolves uh and and uh changes uh with time uh and 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 something that is also very very context specific um I, and you know you can see that in the nature of cpr's evolution um as well uh you know uh if you think about cpr in um in its early avatars in the first few decades of its uh, f- uh foundation f- founding um it really was a space where a lot of uh critical players in the policy ecosystem largely bureaucrats policy practitioners uh found their way into after they were sort of finishing uh their um their careers as implementers implementers and practitioners to uh, to draw on that experience do some deep thinking feedback into shaping and framing uh the policy narratives in in the power structures where policy is made um and and you know there was this sort of fluid movement between uh decision making and thinking uh, that sort of took place and in 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 that process you know various uh, critical uh, path breaking moments of india's policy history were actually shaped particularly around uh the south asia region uh urban uh is another area where i think we really broke some ground and at the same time uh we uh, cpr also brought in um uh, policy researchers or or techno uh, domain thinkers uh who were um uh you know seeking to build a larger public and policy consensus around the directional direction of our economy so dr uh, dr jaja alwalia uh who was at cpr in the late 80s through the 90s uh whose uh, seminal books that i think played a very critical role in shaping uh the policy making ecosystem um that led to the uh, 1991 moment uh, uh wrote those books while she was at cpr is a good example precisely of that so it was sort of a confluence of generating ideas building com- public consensus but also this mobility between uh the act- the practice 
of policy making, thinking, and feeding into uh, feeding into both. Um, and, and that was sort of the nature of the policy ecosystem at the time. In the 2000s, CPR sort of um, uh, rebuilt itself, uh, partly in response to the shifting research ecosystem in India. Uh, the university uh, was going through its own churning um, and uh, a lot of the policy research thinking that used to or ought to be underway in the sites of universities uh, were in search of a home Home, and CPR emerged as the home for precisely that. And it was also very crucial for CPR to uh, reinvent itself along that line because this was also a time where new ideas uh, and new uh, policy thinking needed to be seeded. So whether we look at challenges like climate change, the environment, urbanization, uh, governance, uh, these were all critical arenas uh, which uh, were beginning to emerge as potential bottlenecks for India uh, that could uh, uh, th that, that could limit or constrain the gains that were being made domestically after uh, uh, 1991. So some new thinking was needed to say uh, in the 21st century India's development trajectory is going to face new challenges. Are we ready uh, with uh, thinking and direction on where we should go in uh, as we begin to confront those challenges? And I think CPR was very much ahead of the game. And by virtue of being ahead of the game, we were making impact. We were making impact in crafting a new field. We were making impact in bringing on board younger scholars who uh, were, uh, were able to uh, hone their skills, build their expertise and are now extremely powerful voices shaping uh, some of the policy thinking and policy implementation around these issues. That to me is, uh, is, is real impact. Um, in our current avatar, we continue in that trajectory, of course, of building our understandings and policy dialogues on these critical 21st century challenges. Um, but we are also recognizing that a lot of the key challenges that India confronts are in many ways is now uh, being uh, becoming more visible uh, at the state level. The uh the policy making domain is uh, uh, no longer just limited to government of India or national policy making that remains extremely cru cru crucial and relevant, but it also is uh, finding its way into uh, what's happening at the state level. And I would go so far as to say at, this, uh, uh, at the local government level too, each level of India's administra of India's governance structure is, is, is now being pushed to play a crucial role in order for us to leapfrog and respond to the current challenges that we confront. And this means that the center of gravity of our work also has to shift. And you can see that in a lot of what our researchers are now beginning to do. We are beginning to work a lot more uh, closely with state governments, uh, both uh, learning as we do, because after all, at the state level, implementation is a critical uh, issue, uh, but also building, uh, contributing to states to build their own policy capacities for long-term thinking or strategic policy thinking uh, as they go forward. Again, I count these uh, as impact. So I think of impact much less as, uh, you know, a report at policy, at CPR said X, and then you saw change in policy in Y form. Uh, I, I, A, I don't think that that's how policymaking works. B, I worry about that kind of attempt to, to link these two because there are multiple way of factors that come into play in final policy decision making. And those, and our role as outsiders ought to be to present the knowledge uh, in as objective and credible a form as possible and leave it to decision makers to broker compromises and arrive at finalists. I think of impact much more as our ability to craft a field, to shape thinking, uh, and to be responsive to needs uh, as they emerge uh, uh, from the bottom up. It, it occurs to me that uh, you're heading an institution that's going to turn 50 in two years, and in that you sort of have a 
you know, a particular vantage point of being able to see policy uh, impact in this long-term fashion, which perhaps a newer institution might not have. And that's a very valuable insight that you offered. But I'm going to segue a little bit to talking about challenges. You referred to some of the larger ones that CPR is facing. Uh, but uh, CPR has been described as strictly nonpartisan and fiercely independent. That's the, that's the claim we make. How easy or hard is it to remain true to these values in the moments that we are in today? Well, Muktadi, you, you really strike at the heart of uh, the institutional challenge that we all confront. It's, it's not a unique uh, challenge to CPR. Uh, I think that uh, across the globe, uh, we are going through a, a deep churning. Uh, and in that churning, inevitably, um, the space for evidence-based uh, sober analysis uh, becomes increasingly limited. Um, uh, 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 you know, social media, technology, uh, all of this has changed the way in which uh, the public sphere uh, debates ideas, the way in which politics is conducted, and quite frankly, the way in which policy is conducted. I mean, we, we are living in a world today where uh, critical policy decisions, uh, I wouldn't say they are made on Twitter, but certainly Twitter seems to influence uh, how they are made or how they are projected. Uh, so all of this, uh, you know, really places uh, us in uh, a deep existential moment. What is the role of a think tank and how should a think tank sort of preserve itself uh, in this context? I think in some ways, uh, this particular moment makes it even more incumbent upon us as a community of think tankers, of policy researchers, of academics, of practitioners, uh, to hold on to uh, the importance of uh, evidence-based sobriety in the public discourse, even if that means you will not achieve quote-unquote virality, uh, because uh, being able to ensure that careful thought, evidence, and argumentation is inserted into the public sphere and into decision-making uh, is all the more crucial today uh, than it has been, I think, in the past. But in order for us to be able to do this, we have to A, be very conscious of the role that we play uh, and consciously steer away from the temptation of uh, excessed enhanced visibility, uh, whilst at the same time not shying away from it, because after all, this is the way in which the public sphere functions now, and we play a very important role in speaking to the public. And I think that, you'll, as you'll see, even in how CPR's work has evolved over the last decade or so, we used to be, Mukta, you'll remember this, quite shy and reticent about uh, speaking in the sort of internet sphere. Um, and uh, we'd scratch our heads in confusion uh, when we first had to think about a communications officer. But lo and behold, uh, I think, you know, we're certainly not quite there. There's much more to be done, but we're getting there. Uh, and that itself uh, speaks to uh, the, the how we are reinventing or in the need to reinvent in a way that holds on to some of our core yeah, our core values. Uh, the other big challenge, and it's uh, important not to shy away from it uh, um, uh, and speak about it openly, is how uh, research um, and policy work is financed and supported. Uh, I think that uh, in some ways uh, there are uh, new challenges, uh, particularly because the role of ideas versus the urgency of implementation often gets conflated in how uh, we we want to prioritize resource allocation. Uh, so so you know very often in conversations uh, with potential funders, there's a possibility of getting tempted into moving down the the road of implementation because that's sort of where the urgency is felt, uh, rather than convincing uh, uh, those who can who's, uh, uh, who, whose financial resources support research like ours that in fact ideas are central to shaping the nature of implementation. So uh, building a consistent dialogue and conversation with stakeholders in the policy ecosystem and particularly funders to understand why long-term deep independent research is a necessary condition for good implementation, uh, but also a, a less polarized uh, and, and a more uh, effective public sphere is, is crucial. Um, and it's a role that, uh, that, that needs to be played um, uh, in order for uh, good policy research and good policy to happen.
that's uh, again uh, cpr is obviously at a juncture in which uh, it for, it's not only at you know at this moment when everybody else uh, around us whether individuals or institutions are also struggling with these kind of questions about you know whether to chase the new cycle or whether to uh, sit back and really be strategic about what you put out and 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 sort of who to take funding from and all of these questions are very much vibrant and and being discussed a lot in 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 research and development in general uh, but but we're 2 years away from 50 so uh, you know we're at a moment in which we perhaps show, and and you'd be the best person to speak to it are are thinking strategically about many of these issues so what's the vision for cpr at 50 uh what 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 are we moving towards um we, you've talked a lot about how we have got here and where we are right now uh but if you could speak a little bit more about uh you know what are we moving towards as we turn 15 couple of years thanks mukta that's a, a critical question i think uh, given the particular moment uh, that we are in uh, in terms both of our own internal policy dynamics as well as the tectonic shifts that are underway uh, in the globe um you know uh, cpr's vision uh, at 50 is really to be able to help uh build a public consensus around strengthening the fundamental foundational premises of india's developmental model uh economic growth social inclusion sustainability a uh, liberal constitutional order these are the founding a uh, foundational pillars of strength of Ind- for india and these collectively shape india's role within the globe and uh as we turn 50 i think it's time for us to reaffirm our commitment towards uh contributing uh to india to strengthen these foundational pillars and strengthen india's position both internally uh and externally to the world but we want to do this by really reemphasizing the relevance and importance of public values in public policy uh i think we strongly believe in the importance of nurturing public institutions as crucial towards making inclusive policy and so a lot of our collective research policy engagements uh, uh are uh, e- emerging and evolving and i think we you will see that these will strengthen a lot more going forward uh towards studying understanding and actively contributing to strengthening public institutions uh in india we strongly believe uh and it's important for us to reemphasize the the centrality of renewing the public sphere strong inclusive policy making requires a strong and robust public sphere and it is our vision over the next few uh decade uh, to be active contributors towards ensuring that the public sphere remains a space for sober evidence based uh argumentation uh and dialogue um importantly democratic argumentation and dialogue um we also uh feel it's very important and cpr has played this role consistently in its uh, uh in its past as well of nurturing uh the next generation of policy scholars and practitioners uh we have a large and vibrant set of cpr alumni uh who many of whom are now uh in uh leadership positions in their chosen fields of public policy building and strengthening this uh Uh, is a part of our vision uh, uh, for CPR as 50. India needs to have a strong new generation of public policy practitioners who believe in public institutions and public values. Building that is is core to our vision for 50. Um, uh, last and not the least. Uh, we believe strongly that good policy making uh, requires uh, the ability to ensure that voices the multiplicity of voices from the grassroots to the elites find conversation in the uh, in the uh, in the corridors of policy making uh, ensuring that there are platforms and institutions that allow for that mediation uh, is crucial and and remains part of the vision of cpr uh, at 
but to achieve all of these ends we need to be strong as an institution cpr will only be able to achieve its public goals uh, if we are able to ensure that as an institution we are strong and resilient and will be able to stand the test of time and to do that we need to uh, both strengthen our institutional foundations one crucial aspect of that is to be well resourced so we are launching a 50 at 50 campaign to build cpr's endowment Uh, at 50 crores for 50 so we are strong and resilient going forward and we also have to respond to all the 21st century changes of administration and management in order to be able to do what we do well and so uh, over the next two years we are going to hopefully be able to build the foundations towards being a strong and resilient institution that contributes in towards building strong and resilient public institutions embedded and anchored in public values for india Thanks Yamini that sounds like a very well laid out and well articulated and well thought out uh plan and I look forward uh, to see uh, how it unfolds going forward. But I will say that for us to full uh, for CPR's vision is very much anchored in uh CPR's faculty uh and the culture of the institution. So all our faculty you included are the ones who have collectively come together to shape this uh vision this imagine imagination um and uh and we're all uh, going to be building the blocks of this together over the next few years absolutely and thanks yamini for your uh, frank uh, conversation with me today uh outlining challenges but also laying out the strategic vision uh, for CPR going forward uh, it's it's a complex exercise to helm a think tank that's made up of so many different people with all their different ideas uh, and intents uh, i hope the listeners have also found this interesting as cpr turns 48 for more information on cpr's work you can visit our website at www.cprindia.org and follow us on twitter uh, at cpr underscore india and do stay tuned for more episodes of india speak thank you